Hello boys and girls, uh, welcome to another episode of Tech by GP. Today we're going to talk about the AMD FX 6100, a hexa-core CPU that was released in early 2012. And the reason we're talking about this is because right now you can grab one of these used on eBay for about $37.33. And this channel really is all about bang for the buck. So, if you can uh, save on the uh, on on the CPU cost, what what kind of performance will you get uh, when you pair it with a modern GPU like the EVGA uh, GTX 1660 Super, which uh, uh, which is going to be our setup right now. So uh, we're going to benchmark this, uh, you know, with with regular benchmarks. And uh, we're gonna run a few games through it, and you make your decision on whether or not this is still uh, valid and uh, and useful in 2020. So in the Time Spy benchmark, it didn't do too bad, but it didn't do great either. So you'll see here, uh, it's about at. 36 FPS and then you'll see it go down to about 14 and you'll see you'll see that throughout the um, uh, the first part of the benchmark You'll see now in these uh, scenes where there's a lot of movement going on. Uh, the spy is going to start running here. You'll see that the uh, the CPU is around 70, 75 percent, uh, and the GPU is around same uh, 60 to 70 percent on the GPU. I honestly don't think uh, this is doing too bad. So, you know, at 26 to 30 frames per second, that should be okay. When, when it dips down to about the 18 frames per second mark. But then again, Time Spy is a hard benchmark. Uh, but it's still not choppy. It's still doing okay. So uh, I'll give it and uh, barely a pass on this one. So here it is, 4,391, where the CPU score is not even 2,000. Uh, the graphics score is okay, but the uh, CPU score is just whatever. But um, it was still not choppy enough to say that it's not good. It's passable. Next up, we have Resident Evil 6, and I think this is a good benchmark to use, and I've used this benchmark before, and uh, I appreciate it. So it shows you uh, what kind of equipment we're using here, and uh, you can see the frame rate. It's, it's pretty okay. It'll give us a score here at the end as well. I don't see any issues with the rendering or the fluidity of the uh, characters uh, moving around. Uh, granted, there's a lot of characters moving around here, and pretty soon here we're going to see the heroes, and uh, as you can see, it's not um, it's not choppy at all. So I, I think this is, uh, this is good for Resident Evil 6. Actually, this is my favorite part of the benchmark. 
where you see all the f uh, people kind of just in that statue phase and later on they're gonna open up in these uh, demonic creature form. And now they're hatching. So not too bad on this benchmark and it plays exceptionally well even at higher resolutions. So I'm good with that. So over here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high settings. You'll see it dip below. Uh, 60 frame per second, sometimes 50, sometimes 40 frame per second. But we still have the uh, the detail that uh, is important with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So here we have a set of Corsa, and uh, this is one of my. Uh, favorite games to play and the resolution is, is pretty good I think for a racing game so um, we're using the benchmark for Assetto Corsa so here we are now in the benchmark and what we're gonna see is that um, it starts out around 82 frames per second and then it'll peak just shy of 100 FPS This won't be a benchmarking video without Cinebench R20. But uh, AMD, AMD FX6100 really shows his butt here uh, because, well, the FX series was never really good at single core performance. So uh, this is where it really uh, didn't do very well. Now it's finally done doing its thing and you will see the abysmal score of just a little over 700 points. So probably by now you're asking, so what? Well, the so what here is, let's say you will, you'll get this uh, CPU CPU for 37, you know, 37, 38 bucks. Uh, and then this is the uh, the motherboard that I uh, bought for this uh, fifty four dollars on Amazon, uh, and this is the memory that I bought for this, which is fit, uh, fifty one dollars of Corsair Vengeance Blue eight gigabytes, um, and, <clears throat> and this is really where most of your money is going to go into is your uh, is your GPU, which is about let's say two hundred fifty seven dollars plus free shipping. Um, and then, so that, that puts you at $400 and throw in a case, uh, you know, <clears throat> like a mediocre case like this for 40, uh, for 48 bucks, so 450 bucks almost, right? So I, I think that's a decent gaming, uh, gaming rig or light gaming rig at 1080p, you know, uh, you, 
you'd have to um, to kind of fiddle with the settings a little bit to get a higher frame rate, but you'll get you know a minimum of about 30 frame, uh, 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, uh, and then on different games you'll get you know a higher frame rate. So I, I think it's still a good um, a good rig to have the combination of these parts as long as you get a decent enough video card. So uh, I would say it's still relevant if you want to. If you're somebody who will use uh, or, or uh, is okay with using a used CPU, get it on eBay, thirty-seven dollars, and that's that's what I got was a uh, was a used uh, sixty-one hundred on eBay. <clears throat> I did pair it with a uh, with a new motherboard uh, and uh, this a new memory. If you're gonna make a new build. You know, I think uh, this is uh, this is one of the avenues that you can uh, go to. So, I uh, hope you guys like this video and, and the uh, the links to the uh, to all of these uh, components are going to be in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video.